Thank you for the lovely music and for the worship in which we have already participated. These are unusual and difficult days and we don't know what to expect. And we are probably not surprised by much. A few days ago there was a news clip about doctors and nurses dancing and whooping it up in the ICU of a hospital. I thought perhaps I'd broken under the strain of living constantly with danger in very long hours on duty. And then I heard the backstory. He was a healthy young father of three, just 49, struck down hard and suddenly by COVID-19. He was kept alive for almost a month by a ventilator, and somehow with the skill and dedication of the medical team and God's mercy, and a visit from his wife, who sat beside him, holding his hand for three hours after she'd been called in to say the end was near. He came back to life. And the hospital staff danced and lined the hallway, applauding as he was wheeled out of the ICU. As we juggle death, versus economic disaster. In the context of isolation and lockdowns, there are frayed nerves and tempers, heightened anxiety, frustration, fear, despair, and even dread. It is in the midst of this terrible worldwide context we come to this wonderful passage where Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. Do you watch the news? Of course you do. In our home, we don't watch it more than once a day, and usually not at night, because we want a peaceful sleep. But every newscast has numbers. 17,000 COVID cases in Ontario. 1,200 have died. 11,000 have recovered. Quebec and Ontario have the worst figures in Canada. 118 cases in New Brunswick, but no deaths. And after a while, you're totally lost in all the numbers. You realize that you've become a statistic and you're part of the metrics towards normalization. In our passage, this good shepherd calls us by name. He knows who we are, each one, with our own individual Kirk, quirks and markings. It is important to be known by name and not just be a statistic. It is, no, it is important for us to be important to somebody. Long before all this corona business uh, broke out, there was a kid who had a father bunny and a mother bunny, and of course there came a litter of new bunnies. He noticed that they loved dandelions. He didn't know where he could collect enough. And so he came upon a very clever plan. He told half a dozen kids in his class, if they would collect enough dandelions and grass and clover for rabbits, he would name the rabbits in their honor. And the plan worked like magic. Everyone came with an abundance of grass and dandelions, each one to feed their own bunny, who carried their own name. We have buildings in our city named after people we know. Whoever we are, we want to know that we matter to somebody. And our text says Jesus calls us by name. Carlos, Kathleen, Adam, Lena. We are not a hospital number. We are not a government statistic. We are individuals who are unique and matter to God. Jesus knows who we are and calls us by name. And second this, Jesus leads the way into the unknown. And he's out there beyond what we can see. Sheep are notoriously stupid. They like familiarity and they will keep grazing on 
old familiar fields, even when there is nothing left to chew on. And it is the shepherd who has to lead them to new pastures. And the text says, the shepherd leads them and goes before them. That is the nature of the shepherd, the one in whom we trust. There is so much that is unknown as we head into a dark and uncertain future. We guess and we fear, but Jesus has already gone ahead of us. What do we need to fear? I wonder if any of you remember Morris Boyd. He was a preacher from Belfast who um, was for many years the pastor of the largest United Church in Canada, Metropolitan United Church in, in London. I would often slip out to hear him in the evenings when we lived in Aylmer. He would stand in the middle of the chancel and hold forth, sometimes pulling out a lace handkerchief from his sleeve to mop his brow. His favorite theme was God's prevenient grace. Prevenient simply means that God has already gone before us. Do you know what it says to us, what it implies, what it means? It tells us that God is not only behind us, supporting us with forgiveness and grace, and is walking beside us as a loving, strengthening presence. He's also out in front of us, beckoning us at every corner, around every bend, beyond which we cannot see. Julian of Norwich expressed it perfectly when she wrote, We are all in him enclosed. In front of us, beside us, and before us. That is, we are wrapped around by goodness and love. Not only forgiven for what is past, and strengthened in the present, but drawn into a future that is filled with divine mercy. Think for a moment of the difference that truth could make if you were to say to yourself, where, wherever you find yourself, in distressing circumstances, or when you're anxious, when your heart is terrified at what tomorrow will bring, my God, in his loving kindness, shall meet me at every corner beyond what I can see. Wouldn't that be enormously strengthening and reassuring? Now, Morris Boyd died about 10 years ago. He had this inscription put on his gravestone. My God, in his loving kindness, shall meet me at every corner. There was a theology professor who used to say, magnify your certainties. The trouble is with us is that we magnify our uncertainties. When we talk about the future, we say, we don't know what a day will bring forth. We guess and we fear when we ought to be magnifying our certainties. One of our certainties is that the future into which we journey is already filled with God. It is not empty. It is not totally mysterious. If we are Christians, we believe that it is filled with a gracious presence who beckons us and, for our guesses and fears, offers confidence and hope. You don't have to look far to find that kind of faith. Here was a woman from a rural community who had been brought to the hospital in the city she was terminally ill, and she knew it. She said, as they were wheeling me along the corridors, into one room and then into another, to, f to perform all those tests which leave you with little comfort and no dignity, I said to myself, as I turned the corner, my God in his loving kindness shall meet me at every corner. Beyond what she could see, she knew God was there, that Jesus had already gone 
ahead. It was a marvelous text that Peter read to us earlier. Verse 3 says, He calls us by name. Verse 4, He goes before us. And let us slip down to verse 10. One of the texts that I enjoy and love so much. At least the second part of it. It says, The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. It is one of the best descriptions of what the gospel offers. Life in all its fullness. But there are thieves and robbers. We've been watching Waco on Netflix. It tells the story of David Koresh, who believed he was a special messenger sent from God. He was not only sure of this, he was cocksure about his interpretation of revelations. And there is an arrogance there. And sadly, his story ends tragically, perhaps unfairly, in misery and death. Says our text, the thief comes to steal and destroy. <laughs> I wonder if you heard about the ice cream shop, which was robbed one hot summer evening. The manager, Nathan Peabody, was warned moments before the robbery. You see, he was contacted by phone, and the voice said, Are you the manager? Well, listen carefully. Don't panic. This is the police. You are going to be robbed. Do not resist. Let the robber have your money. We will be waiting, we will be waiting for him right outside your store. And we need to catch him red-handed with the money on him. Thank you for your cooperation. Sure enough, a man with a scruffy beard and a knife came in demanding money. And Mr. Peabody took all his cash out of the drawer and gave it to him. And Peabody watched as the robber left the store, waiting for the cops to close in. Instead, the robber just got into his car and drove away. And as he saw the taillights disappear in the distance, he realized what had just happened. He realized that the call hadn't come from the police, but from the thief. <laughs> Jesus was right. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. He came that we might have life and have it abundantly. In these days of uncertainty, live by your certainties. God behind us. God beside us. God before us. And go and live abundantly.